Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Neil Howard, here on Health Professional Radio. Thanks for joining us once again. We're going to have a conversation with Mr. Edward Saget. He's co-founder and board member and co-CEO of OrthoGrid Systems, a Salt Lake City-based global medtech company. And uh, he's joining us on the program to talk about a partnership with the University of Utah Hospital. Welcome to the program, Edward. Thank you, Neil, for having uh, me. Thank you uh, for uh, the opportunity. Well, I appreciate you taking the time. Uh, give our listeners a bit of background about yourself. Uh, what is your background in the uh, within the healthcare space? Absolutely. So I was in med school in France for a few years. I got exposed to surgical care specifically early on by going into surgery while going to med school, uh, something you could do in France, and moved to the United States about 22 years ago to continue med school over here, but got exposed to, once again, the orthopedic space uh, in the surgical arena. And from there, we decided to just pursue more the business side of uh, orthopedic surgery, uh, working with companies like Smith and & Nephew and Johnson and & Johnson and, and sales and, and marketing. And uh, met my co-founder, actually, Richard Boddington, who is a biomechanical engineer from training, working from some of the same companies. And uh, we always uh, were passionate about the new technology and the improvements that they could bring to orthopedic surgery. Mm-hmm. And from there, we uh, we work more closely together and look for opportunities in that segment of the healthcare market. When we're talking orthopedics, we're, we're talking all different types of uh, implants, replacements, um, all different types of materials, are we not? Yes, orthopedics is very broad in terms of uh, solutions that are provided for physicians to do the best job they can for the patients, and that includes using uh, implants uh, made out of metals, different kinds of metals and alloys, but also you know all kinds of different types of plastics and uh, highly molecular weight type of polyethylene. Uh, uh, and so, but it also includes technology. It includes software. It includes code, uh, and that's the way really uh, the improvements in alignment and other things of that nature are being able to get to the next level with orthopedic surgery. Now, as far as OrthoGrid Systems is concerned, let's talk about this, uh, this collaboration with the University of Utah. Are you focusing on specific types of implants for this collaboration, or are we talking about something that's going to uh, offer uh, interoperative alignment technologies across all of these orthopedic uh, implants and technologies that we talked about or that we touched on? Yeah, the University of Utah is a very well-respected center for orthopedics in the United States. Um, one of their interests in working uh, with us and us with them is uh, – looking at different ways to improve intraoperative alignment specifically. Orthopedic implants are supposed to be placed in a certain uh, way so that they can be optimized for patient outcomes, longevity, uh, wear and wear, uh, and then performance, just Mm -hmm. return to function. So um, the interest of University of Utah partnership uh, is on multiple aspects. One, we have an orthopedic software platform and that platform takes care of very specific uh, needs that the orthopedic surgeon has in surgery as it relates to the image quality that they receive and uh, the ability to make measurements of those images. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that's across all orthopedic procedures. But specifically with the university is that uh, we've been able to work on key specific applications. So total hip replacement, for example, or hip preservation type surgeries, which allows a physician to do procedures so the hip joint can last longer uh, and be optimized before it needs maybe a replacement or even trauma surgeries in the general uh, sense of the term. And uh, one of the key elements of the partnerships as well as being able to work with them uh, through the data that they generate. Uh, our technology is advanced technologies. It requires data, and without the data and without a partnership with the university center like the University of Utah, uh, we are, as innovators, limited by the amount of information we have. So mm-hmm. working in partnership and tandem with those uh, uh, universities, including the University of Utah, is very critical for the advancements of our technologies. Mm-hmm. Are we testing these advancements actually on patients, or are we still in testing phases in, in other areas? Yeah, good question. So we we do not um, – we. So good question. With the FDA requirements and the quality management systems that we have in place, there's very specific 
ways of uh, testing things. We do all of our testing on saw bombs and cadavers ahead of time and, and uh, making sure that our software are appropriately uh, tested before they're being used on, on patients. Uh, through the use of uh, investig- investigational review boards, RVs, uh, surgeons are able to progressively adopt technologies uh, and double check uh, against their standards and making sure that they are working properly. And that's part of the process. Those, uh, te- several of those applications are now actually fully approved by the FDA and then used uh, not just in the University of Utah, but in a lot of other systems across the United States now. And, uh, you know, we're looking at furthering the advancements that we have in collaboration. And like I said, using the data that we're able to gather in order to improve upon the current applications that we have. So we're not talking about um, a facility or practice having to undergo a complete overhaul of uh, specific systems. So that's actually a very important point, Neil, because hospitals have something called a thoracopy uh, machine or C-arm that brings in the orthopedic surgery a live x-ray. And that live x-ray is something the surgeon relies on in order to make decisions, you know, for each step of the surgery and confirm pretty much the work they're doing. It turns out that we have an opportunity with our system to plug in to any of the systems. So they don't have to acquire new equipment uh, per se, except, you know, the ability to bring our software to work with those machines. And every time there is an x-ray that's being taken intraoperatively, we can fix, uh, for example, the quality of the image. Um, There is in the fluoroscopy image something called distortion, and distortion is is a process by which the image is warped. We are there to correct that image as a first step towards alignment so that the physician can look at an image that gives him uh, true information. In, in technology, we call it garbage in, garbage out. And so we're fixing the garbage uh, and so that it's, a, it's an accurate image. And that's true to pretty much all orthopedic surgery using a C-arm that has an image intensifier. What would you say is next on the horizon for this testing uh, as far as your software and advancing availability in the future? And then would you give our, our listeners a website that we can go to and learn more? Yeah, absolutely. I think our primary concern is to make sure that the physician, patients, and hospitals are getting the different benefits that uh, of accuracy, precision, uh, and then obviously cost effectiveness uh, for the hospitals. And that's our number one goal uh, always and continues to be. Uh, but beyond this, the platform that we've uh, created allows for advanced technologies to be integrated further. And that's what you'll see from us uh, and continue to see from us is the ability to bring new technology and really solving key problems in the orthopedic surger- surgical space and that includes more specific surgical applications in uh, trauma or in spine, for example, or the integration of advanced technologies around um, uh, that supports the fluoroscopic image in a way that gives more information to the to the to the physician, but also bring some level of automation into our system using smart algorithms, so that the hospital is not as dependent on staff and can reach a level of automation using our software that frees up uh, a lot of cost and a lot of logistics and, and increases the efficiency of, of the work in the operating room. So those are the things we're really excited about. And you can continue to learn more about OrthoGrid at uh, www.orthogrid.com. Uh, and we are actually revamping our website so that you will be more clued into some of those advancements that we're looking to bring in. Edward Saget, thank you so much for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning. Thank you very much, Neil, for the opportunity. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Mr. Edward Saget, co-founder, board member, and co-CEO of OrthoGrid Systems. Audio copies are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. Listen in, download it, SoundCloud, and be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.